Hello everyone. This is a practice tutorial for lathe manufacturing where we are going to manufacture this part. Let's go ahead and take a look first of all at the dimension of the billet. It's 160 so it's very similar to the tutorial. However, with a dimension of 60 as a diameter, so 30. In order to save us time, we're going to open the previous part, which is the billet, and we are going to save that into a new folder. We're going to call that lathe 2 and we're going to create the same series of folders, so parts, product, product and process as well as NC code but we can do that later so to save myself time since I have set up everything for my lathe all I have to do is put 30 in here and I have a new billet that I can use for my part now if I want to actually um, I could have like made the, my part shorter but it doesn't really matter so I'm going to file save this as a billet and then I'm going to use this to create my part so for my new tutorial make sure you update also this one in here all right so now that we have this and it's saved we will go inside the sketch if you remember from the tutorial, what we will do is we will make those as a construction element. And then we are going to go ahead and create the profile that we have. There is a lot of angles and dimensions. I don't want to be mistaken. Let's go ahead and bring this here. I don't want to, and I'm going to press F3 to remove the design tree. And like this, I am concentrated on my part so I don't want to be doing some mistakes so I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, these constraints and I will add them manually myself profile so we're going to move a little bit in dimension we have a diameter of 14 so which means 7 a little angle so I'm trying to reproduce what I'm seeing in here then I go a little bit along V another angle we go a little bit we come down we go straight there's a circle that is not tangent so we can actually select I, I will modify that in a second the dimensions and then a circle and then we go down all right so let's go ahead and this one change it so before we like you can drag the center as it is so these are my dimensions the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these as vertical or as horizontal because we have them into this position yeah of course when you deactivate those and you want to reactivate them make sure you click in here next thing I want to do is I'm going to make those vertical to make sure that these are respected then I'm going to do the dimensions from here to here as a first stage. This is a 10. And then I'm going to do the overall dimension from the start to the end, 160. This is to make sure that I have my... So in here we have a tangency. So let's go ahead and put that in here. What else do we have? Let's see. So we can put this external dimension. This one should be 30. Oops. Okay. So very good. Then this point and this axis should have coincidence as well as this point and this axis should have coincidence. All right. Now I can double click and put 30. It will go up this radius. Oh, hold on. This one needs to be, hold on. This one needs to be vertical as well. So did we, 
yes let's make sure that it's a little bit like this that's good this dimension is 15 we can go ahead and add this um, I'm gonna move this a little bit like this well actually we have a dimension of 30 here so we can might as well just put 30 on the other side 15 what else do we have we have from here to here a 44 diameter so that makes it a 22 what else do we have we have the angles the 45s we can add those let's go ahead and add the angles there let's wait a little bit on the angles let's put the 5 the 15 the light oh there's here 14 so that makes it a 7 so let's make that a 7 then we have the dimension going from here to here and that is a five and there's an angle so we can start putting the angles now i usually like to leave angles later so i mean this is 45 or 135 that's the same then we have a dimension from here to here 15 so from here all the way to here 15 so we can click from here to this point to that point and make sure this is 15 what else this is another 45 let's go ahead and put that so 135 all right do we have do we are we missing any dimensions in here so we have to make sure that it remains um, um, as a constraint so there is a 45 okay there is a 12 here so this is important so this 24 this is a 12 here so from here to here that's a 12 and let's see if we put this angle between this one and this one yes and we have our beautiful ISO constraint part and if we go out and we click F3 and we see the shaft we have our part automatically ready so we have the 30 portion the angle oh did we put the radius at 40 nope we did not well good observation or else we would have been in trouble 40 so 40 let's verify everything 30 30 40 12 15 45 22 I don't know if I missed anything 45 okay this one this one this is 45 and this is a 45 they are here 5 15 7 okay this is 12 I feel like it is already set but you know what we'll see if it yeah I mean this is already set so we don't need to add all of these dimensions this is good all right voila so let's go ahead and save the part and we can close this one here we don't need it anymore and we can actually start with the manufacturing assembly so by having your files prepared you are capable of manufacturing assembly i did move one step you are capable of like moving a little bit faster than usual so let's go ahead here d or h i'm gonna call it lace 2 v01 insert existing component so it was already selected make sure you select lathe like the right folder part open so you can also right click reframe on this is one of the functions that i like so let's go ahead and open the shape of the so both of them are blue because i saved without changing the color so we can actually come here properties and remove the transparency and put this as green here we go now this is good file save all yes i want to proceed oh uh what is this part place your build it part v1 so the, didn't i save this so we go to product and save all right good so now let's make sure that 
so although the assembly is right I always prefer that to avoid any mistakes to actually create the constraints so access constraints coincidence so let's remove this so that it stops bothering us and this one and this one and finally the angle so we can press ctrl u already and finally the angle between these two should be zero and we can hide the constraints we don't need to see them as long as they are applied we save everything and now we're ready to go to the process so we go to machining lathe machining as we have done before we can it's beautiful this is a beautiful part so as we have done before uh, we are going to hide the shafts and leave it at the sketches and let's go ahead and change this one to something orangey or another color file save all yes and so oh this is we didn't save yet the process so might as well come here and create the name what did we call this place two zero one all right cool so now we can come and select the machine as an horizontal lathe so this is giving us a little bit which emulator we want we can actually even select the post processor i am sure that this will not work but just to demonstrate it because i don't have a post processor installed in here the reference is already right and you've seen in the previous tutorial how you can change it if you wanted to the part this is the part the stock this is the stock and we are ready in business we always start with a rough turning operation so you select the billet and following that we select the part I'm not sure if it's going to like selecting this part, but you know what? We will never know if we don't experiment. Let's leave. Let's see the depth of cut at 2. You know what that means already. We're going to activate the approach and the retract. So this is where the tool comes in from. And this is where the tool retracts to. I'm going to hide the design tree. So this is, you can do this by pressing F3 just so that I have more space so that we can see what's going on. And we're gonna make sure that we're selecting a diamond insert for such operations. And voila, this is the roughing operation. So it's not gonna go down in the roughing. This is actually something that you were gonna have to play around and make like a groove in here or so on. So for the machine to go down. So now let's look at the video. And this is the roughing operation and we're going to associate the video to this one so the good thing about katia is that let's press f3 to bring this back the good thing about katia is that it is made in sequence so it is trying to tell you that well after you finish your rough turning you can you should do the groove turning and the recess turning and uh profile finish turning so it's it's kind of directing you on the right orientation let's go ahead and see this little operation in here how we can do it with uh, recess turning so we're going to click after rough turning in here and it's going to open it up so we're going to select um, this line in here and we're going to select this line in here and let's test and see what happens so in this location it only created that portion so let's go ahead and see if we select that with the recess as well and see what happens we're testing so this is good this coming in recess and coming to go all the way up now let's add this portion to it 
and see what's going to happen here. And we're getting better. Uh, we are capable of removing these portions, but look at the angle in here. So let's see what are the options that we have in the strategy. So it has a maximum depth of cut of two. Uh, does it have an angle? So let's see, these are the options that we have. So we have the lift off angle, the angle before plunge. So it's saying 45 degree. I think this is, um, this is something that we might wanna change. And so, so let's see, let's see how it looks like in terms of the video. So this is what happened. This is the first portion. Now this is the second portion. So we got closer to it, but we still have material in here. So we might have to do a groove or we might have to play around with these uh, op operations. So we can see in here, okay, so this is trailing safety angle. So it is showing, oh, let's go back to the tool diamond. So the angle cannot be, so this is, this is no, this is an okay angle. We can pick something narrow, but this is an okay angle. Let's see if we pick this one here, what would happen? Nah, that doesn't help. So as you can tell, there is an angle in here and it's not, so as if it's selecting a point and it's going along this angle. So this is the angle that we want to play with so that we can do this part. Now we do have another solution. We can do, we can try to do this groove turning. So to remove this excess, but let's play around a little bit and see if we can if this makes any uh, change. I'm gonna try to be extreme. I'm gonna try to do 10 to see the difference it creates. And we simulate that. Eh, it didn't really affect influence much. So let's see 80. If it influenced, pff, it doesn't influence at all. So we're gonna put this back at 45. And well, I guess we are going to try with the, the, the other operation. Lift off angle, lift off distance, machining tolerance. All right, so what i'm gonna go ahead and try to do a groove operation i'm gonna put it in between both so i'm gonna try to put it after roughing so you see how you when you click something it puts it in between and for um this is where we're going to select this one and see if this one actually remove that portions in here okay it does remove that portion so we're going to see the effect here perfect and we're going to associate that video all right so i guess we could have continued the group you know what let's i'm not going to test this now i'm going to double click here and we're going to see how it looks like now after all the operation combined if we were capable of doing a final roughing there we go we have a good roughing everywhere so keep in mind roughing we are trying to remove material but we're not finalizing the shape so we're gonna store the video and now this is after we've done all of these operation we are going to do a finishing operation so we do finishing after this last recess turning and we can actually there is an icon in here navigate on belt of edges so this selects everything and let's see what happens here. Oh, okay. So this happens when you select even this edge in here. That's the problem. So I'm going to cancel this. We're going to remove and we're going to select these edges one by one all the way until just this one without this one. So this is Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Activate. 
حالا activate did we solve it the problem why is it starting from here okay all right I did it so it was showing the wrong animation in here but it actually did not like these dashed line it actually did the right thing so it actually did finish it all right we still have the finishing in here so after we did this finishing we still have to do one more finishing and there is a grow finishing operation and we are going to select that portion that was not finished and let's see collision is detected between the insert and the part profile during a rapid motion check the option parameters so basically it's basically oh the approach the approach so this is very important this mistake and if it persists what we have to do actually and I, I'm gonna do it if, if it persists we're gonna create another approach point in here and you're going to see that so let's see if uh, it persists okay so we, we were able to save it but no nah, not really so we fixed everything in here which is great we have our part the way that we want it but the <laughs> the groove tool actually removed material from here so to fix that we are going to go into our part so let's go into our billet so where do we have okay so let's let's hide the references here and go into here and add a point and this point we're gonna add it i'm gonna put a point somewhere on top of this in here so it's going to be so let's see this point what are these values of this point so z x 100 so i'm going to use x 100 but i'm going to have like a z minus 100 so we put this point and we're going to put at the x 100 and the z minus 100 so so i'm starting from here so i'm going to go down like this so i'm not going to have any crash whatsoever so i'm going to go back to this groove finishing and within the group finishing the approach point now is going to be this one and we're going to retract to this one and this is going to solve my problem in here so let's see nope it did not solve it and i know why that's so this is good i'm recording these videos in one shot um these are things that there is no way that i can there like i mean just with experience you would get but basically what's happening in here is there is a small option somewhere in here yeah this option where it is actually uh, giving a default home point to the tool change that sometimes it takes this into account so i'm going to put like an x100 in here and like i'm going to put the x100 in here and this is going to force to have a different changing point by default although the programming would Although if I generate the G code, this would not happen, but just for the sake of simulation is equally as important as the G code. So you see now I've changed this fictitious point, although that's not the real point. And now we're not going to have any more of this issue. And voila, we have our beautiful part that is finalized. You just have to do a part of operation in the end. And we're done. Thank you so much for, oh, okay, generating, that was trying to end it a little bit too early. The last step would be to generate the NC code, just like we did it last time. You select the NC code, you, well, we have another machine here selected, and let's go ahead and execute and see if we get a lot of errors, or if it would work out this time. So these, so the, the thing is, the NC output, there is zero errors and the thing is um, i don't really have a post processor really connected to this so this is why I, i'm going to accept this and usually um, you do this in a 
um, like somebody would set up would define your post processor and every machine has its own uh, post processor so this wraps up our this tutorial thank you so much for uh, listening to me